As a species, we face problems in all areas of common need. Our air is being poisoned, our water is polluted, our food is genetically modified, our bodies riddled with corporate chemicals, and our so-called leaders are being eaten alive by their own greed. The status quo is attacking the very nature of life on this planet, and in its course of consequence, taking away the fundamental rights to produce and consume our own food, to raise our own children, to preserve our own communities, and has dissolved the integrity of the fabric which makes up our own civilization. Indeed, this is irrational, but it doesn't have to stay this way. What's necessary is that each and every one of us begins a process of learning, asking questions, discovering answers, and communicating solutions. Reading books stimulates our internal conversation, and this is why the Latin word for book is also the same Latin word which means freedom, and that is what personal liberty is all about. Using knowledge as our base, we as human beings then apply methods of decision making, and this forms the foundation of informed choice, free will, and liberty. It's also known as a science of volition. Without a method or science of volition to maintain your free will at all times, you are left to the chaos which erupts when we react to the world without thinking. If our goal is to help kids become critical thinkers, lifelong learners who really enjoy thinking and reading and playing with numbers and ideas, if we want to help them become good learners and good people who can create and sustain a functioning democracy, then education would look very different from the way it looks right now, at least in our culture. A primary reason why the mass of the American population resisted compulsory schooling was a widespread belief that its purpose had little to do with education and everything to do with control. Their suspicions were well-founded. The idea of drawing all children, all young people, into some universal program administered by the leader or the leaders, nowhere on earth was that able to be imposed until northern Germany, under the military rule of the Prussians, finally imposed that in 1818. The divide and rule policy that has become part of the educational system was devised by the British and it then takes knowledge systems, divides them into small subject matters and these become entities of their own and take life of their own. And henceforth it is possible for the master race to control uh, a large majority of people in terms of uh, just systematically uh, uh, functioning uh, in a, in a, in a uh, sectorial way. This was all worked out. It didn't evolve by a lot of rational people saying, we'll take this, this, and this from the past, then the next generation will take this, this, and this. This was set down largely in a handful of places, and the Prussian experiment leaped into the United States almost immediately in the 1840s. Its propagandists covered the country here. Its backers, its financial backers, set up the most important teacher training institutes and finance those institutes. But the people who gave us schooling weren't these wealthy people. They were utopian thinkers who believed the family and tradition were the greatest obstacles to making a perfect society, a utopia. The Gary Plan was introduced. It had a new organizational scheme in which different subjects would be taught by different departments. Similar to the breaking down of factory jobs under Taylorism, students would be herded from classroom to classroom in order to digest a stream of standardized factual information, like Pavlov's dogs, they would do so at the ring of a bell. Conscious beings can also be conditioned to respond to stimuli, just as is done with animals. This happens when thinking is removed from the space between stimulus and response, and as a consequence, volition or free will to choose is lost.
This is the use of our natural reflexes against our own interests. This is the triggering of animalistic fight or flight reflexes with the caveat of being manipulated by our reflexes if we do not force ourselves to think between the input of stimulus and the outcome of response. The manipulation of our stimulus and response reflexes without conscious processes of thinking in between leads to our being enslaved by the thoughts, words, actions of others while simultaneously we succumb to loving our servitude as our own self-indenturement goes unrecognized. Without observation and active thought, we cannot attain understanding and freedom. What is a circle? Billy Henlow. A circle is a closed curve in which all endpoints on the circumference are equally distanced from the center points. Very good. The system uses literacy as a form of slavery and it remains that way until a methodology of critical thinking is exercised actively and consistently by the reader. The system cannot effectively manage illiterate people as they cannot be manipulated in widespread manner by their written word and therefore in order to preserve and proliferate itself the managerial class has created compulsory public schooling. If public schooling is dumbing us down which then artificially extends our childhood by retarding our internal dialogue, clouding our curiosity, and irradiating our imaginations, then it is no wonder that it produces incoherence through denial of experience. A lack of understanding this chain of cause and effect yields a population which is dependent on authorities for its survival. Understanding is the process through which individuals become and remain free. Much of what happens in schools in North America is really for the convenience of people who have most of the power. There is, if anything, an active discouragement of critical questioning. Corporations claim they want kids who are able to think outside the box, but only so far as they're caught within a larger box that works to the advantage of the free market, um, which means that the market economy, based on competition, based on economic rather than human considerations, uh, ends up controlling the system. Rockefeller and Carnegie and, and uh, J.P. Morgan, these people saw a different kind of utopia through solving the problem of production with high-speed machinery, they saw that material abundance could be created. And to do that, the family had to be moved off center stage. And the children had to be processed like raw materials, a predictable, homogenous, safe product. They're set up to sort people into occupational categories roughly uh, consonant with what uh, the current economy demands. In uh, 1980, I went to work for Ronald Reagan, uh, and I worked there for two years until I was fired. Right? But uh, I had worked hard for him from 1978 to get him elected. Right? And then in 1980, because of the work I'd done uh, and the work in education, they put me, I got an appointment in the U.S. Department of Education it was not a really um, exciting job. It was mainly to see if the universities, the schools, the different entities across the country that were getting money or around the world from the taxpayers, that they were getting their final, their quarterly reports in on time. That's all. It had nothing to do with philosophy. Huh? I was always busy because I had lots of things to read. And I would stay after work. I'd stay until 2 a.m. in the morning. When everybody was gone, I'd get into everything. What I saw was so depressing. It was the greatest horror story I had ever encountered. And at one point, he sent me, he, he wanted to get rid of me out of that office. He sent me up to the National Institute of Education, which is where all the research is performed. They send out all the grants and contracts to the universities or schools or whatever from there. I found out I was really in the belly of the beast right there because I, I had access to all the computer printouts 
of all the grants and contracts of your money folks going out not just in, uh, across our country but all around the world about how to change the education system from academics to a brainwashing using Pavlovian Skinnerian opera conditioning computers and workforce training for the globalist economy the corporate fascist socialist communist government that's coming right in this minute so I spent six weeks up there going through all the stuff and uh, I can't tell you how horrible first of all even if you don't care about children you don't care about education you don't care about your country you don't care about anything people are there people out there who don't care about anything they do care about their wallet huh you should care about this money that has been spent in the name of education it's total brainwashing anything coming out of Washington is a total Marxist brainwash and Marxism is the world of the future unless we stop it right now the plan is to move education away from what we have right now which is traditional education that's you have so many Carnegie units you had four classes of math and four classes of English and so many classes of history to graduate to what is called outcome based education what is the difference between what we had before and what the new regulations are before with the EQA the state had control down to the district level and could control curriculum planning which was aimed at targeted subgroups of children but we had children who did not conform outcome based education does not say the school will teach it says the student must demonstrate and through the computer the control goes down to the individual child your child will conform or they will not move forward they will meet the goal so where is it coming from where is the driving force what we found is it's not being driven by education it's being driven by the big 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 industries that's who's driving the changes when we read the scans the scans talked all about what we need to have the proper worker of tomorrow and this is business telling education what business needs or wants in the worker of tomorrow what's the best way to change the behavior what's the best way to attack the attitude and serves it back up to the child. You've all heard the lifeboat story, right? You know, there's 10 people in the lifeboat, the lifeboat only holds nine, who are we gonna throw out of the lifeboat? And if I told you that story, all of your minds would start thinking, who am I gonna throw out of the lifeboat? The first time I heard the lifeboat story, I was a grad student, and I said to the prof, well, we're not throwing anybody out of the lifeboat. We'll throw a rope out of the back of the lifeboat and somebody swims for a one hour shift. There's only ever nine people in the boat and everybody only swims space three hours a day for an hour at a time. He said, there's sharks in the water. I said, there's a shark back in the boat. And the conversation ended. But I was a ringer because I knew that he had controlled the universe. I've heard hundreds of suggestions. If I had said to you, save everybody in the boat. But I didn't say that. I said, who are you going to throw out of the lifeboat? And so your mind went right over here. If I control the universe of choices, I can mold someone's behavior. It makes the child think that they made up their own mind when they really didn't because I gave them some very concrete guidelines inside of which they had to make up their mind. And it's a very valid way of changing a behavior. So the EQA was the basis for curriculum planning for all the districts in the state. And it was a mandatory test. The districts had to take it because they had to base their long-range plan on it in order to get their state money. What did the EQA test? It tested locus of control whether you are an internally motivated person or an externally motivated person whether you stand up against a crowd or whether you go with the flow and they scored it there was a right answer to the attitude question the right answer was go with the flow how do I vary reward and punishment to make you do what I want you to do sample question there was an organization called the midnight marauders they went out at midnight and spray painted all over everybody's walls I would join the group if a my best friend were a member of the group child could say yes no or maybe the correct answer was yes I would join the group if all the popular kids were members of the group yes no or maybe the correct answer was yes I would join the group if my parents would ground me if they found out the correct answer was no you are supposed to avoid punishment but you are supposed to honor commitments to friends and go with the group 
the goal was collectivism. After 200 years of folly in America, it's time to recognize that we as human beings have natural predators whose purpose it is to control, harness, and drain each of us of our energy and figurative life's blood. They use words as weapons, force, fraud, and coercion as their tactics. They are organized, and we are not, which is largely a consequence of our going through the public schooling system. So the question is, why don't our public schools teach us this basic fact of human history, that we as human beings have natural predators? As the evidence illustrates, it is because the public school system was designed in its form and function by the predators of humanity. Why would a small group of people seek to deny the rest of us accurate knowledge of our history here as humanity? Denial of that which exists does not serve any of our best interests, and therefore it's irrational. It, all the way up through, even through graduate school, the average student studies to avoid the consequences of not studying. It's an avoidance kind of or an escape kind of thing. What was once a survival reflex, fight or flight, is now being used to control us. For when the method of dispelling confusion is held secret from the public, the public is propelled into uncertainty, fear, confusion, frustration, anger and aggression on a daily basis. This makes the behavior of the herd highly predictable. It makes the job of the managerial class very easy. The real predators of humanity need your attention. They need your fear. They need you to panic and to react without thinking. But you don't have to give it to them. Our predators also have fears of their own, one of which being that they don't know how to control and manage individuals without the use of fear. Outgrow fearful thinking and learn to see beyond the fear and you have literally outgrown the ability for others to control you with it.